War and war's alarms creep into the story of the old town on every page, despite the fact that its name to me is peace. The reason is not far to seek. I was not yet a month old when my mother had to fly from home with me in her arms on the outbreak of war. A report ran through the land that the slaves, that is, the prisoners in the Holstein State Prison, had been freed by the Germans and were swarming north, the vanguard of an army that looted and laid waste where it went. The women with little children were hurriedly sent away, and the old town prepared to give battle to the invaders. Barricades were built and manned. The council requisitioned 200 pounds of powder from the next town, to be carried in as he could by the village express, who made his trips on foot, and they dug up an old cannon that had done duty as a hitching post a hundred years or more, to impress it into the municipal defense. The unencumbered women molded bullets and boiled water and pitch in the houses overlooking the route of the enemy's supposed advance. The parishes roundabout sent squads of peasants to the defense armed with battle axes and spears. They will show you those weapons yet in the town hall. They keep the record there, too, of the council at which peace prevailed on the showing of military experts that it would cost two hundred dollars to dam the river and flood the fields to stop an army. That was voted to be too steep a price to pay for being sacked, perhaps, in the end, as a captured town. But it is not the whole story, I am sure. Better sense must have dawned, I imagine, at the sight of those armaments. That they would have died on the barricades to the last man in defense of their homes, I know, for I knew them. How carefully and deliberately they planned is shown by the erection of one of the barricades in front of the drugstore, where Hoffman's drops would be handy, in case any were taken ill, it was not faint-heartedness, but cool foresight. When the summons came for the last time, I was a half-grown boy. I remember it that gray October morning, when a gendarme, all dusty and famished from his long, hard ride, reined in his panting horse at the tavern in the marketplace, where the children were just then swarming with their school books. I hear the clatter of the iron-shod hoofs in the quiet streets, the clanging of his saber as he leaped from the saddle and spoke gravely to the innkeeper. Far and fast as he had come, riding farther and riding farther, ghostly legions were even then hurrying from the south on his trail to grieve the echoes of the old town. I see the sudden awe in the faces as the whispered message went from mouth to mouth, The king is dead. The king, whom the people loved as their friend, last of his house, to whose life was linked inseparably the destiny of Denmark, I see the solemn face of our old rector and hear the quiver in his voice as he bade us go home. There would be no school that day. A great sorrow had come upon the land.